Hi, I am Amelie with Systematic Excellence Consulting, and today I'm going to go over ClickUp for students or student use. And so I've come up with some examples of uh, even homeschooling. So a friend um, of mine, Leslie, allowed me to look at her um, lesson plan, uh, one of her previous lesson plans, and how she manages her homeschooling schedule. So I've taken that and translated that into ClickUp, and then I've also given created some examples for people who um, maybe are in um, in person school, um, but want to have a better way to organize their schedule and um, their classes and, and projects and things like that. So I'll go over the homeschool part first, and then I'll go over the way that um, I put together for a student that would be an in-person school and really the way that I broke it down could be used in either um, situation. Um, I just wanted to give a couple different examples. So the first thing I did here is I created a daily schedule. So what Leslie had was a very detailed schedule of um, for her kids to follow from when to get up and get ready for school to like to the end of the day down to dinner time. So I took that schedule. Um, I actually started building it out in the table view. And so what I have here, so you can see that I created subtasks here. Um, you can turn off seeing subtasks. I wanted to see them so I could see what I've laid out. So I actually started building it here in the table view, but I think it also looks okay in um, the list view. So again, you can use any view that you want. Um, the other one that is helpful is creating, if you use a calendar view, so what this allows you to see is you can, the ones that are the um, dotted line are recurring events. So then you can open this up and you can see each one of these. You could click on this, see what any notes are, if there's any notes or anything in there. Um, and you can move tasks around. This is a schedule, so I don't think that it would lead to needing to move things around um, since these are events that are recurring each day. But what I did is um, I set, I created the start and um, end time. So for her, the start date is weekdays. So I set it for weekdays and her time was from 9.30 a.m. till 10.30 a.m. was when the kids were getting ready. So I put this to recurring every weekday so I can show you here. So it's going to, it's going to recur daily when closed, skip weekends. I want to create a new task. And then um, you, for the options, you can say if you want everything included, I everything's fine, recur forever, update to open once it's closed. So the idea behind here is that um, the child would come in or the parent would come in, you know, if you're going to have your child and click up to, you know, teach them how to kind of manage their schedule, they'd come in and click it closed when they're done. And then it would recur for the next day. Or if you're not going to have your child in, then you would come in and check it closed. Um, and then it would recur the next day. And it and I set the time limit on it. Um, and then as you can see, it's going to recur forever um, based on how I have it set up. So I have, then I added a custom field to show the start date and time. And so it tells us the due date, that's the end time. But then I also did that by just adding a column right here and I just selected start date. Um, that's over here so you can see start date, I have it right there. Um, and then I selected a text box to put some notes in there. So she had some specific notes about when they're allowed to have phones or um, you know when they're not allowed to have phones. Um, and so I put those notes in there. <clears throat> Inside of here, I created a checklist of it kind of broken down. So she had it broken down a little more specifically where it's like get up and stretch and then have breakfast, take vitamins, shower and get dressed. Um, but I just put them as checklist items here. And then um, for this one, she has um, different um, learning times here. So... These are Mondays. Um, I have the recurring time here. So this starts at 1030 and then it goes till 12. Um, and then this is broken up into two separate pieces. So 
five, 15 minutes of the elephant learning and then an hour of um, time for learning and then any other work from mom and dad. So I put those in there recurring on Monday, but I put the main task. So if you open this up, you can see the subtask. They will also recur on Mondays, but the main task is going to recur. 10, it will come due 1030 a.m. to 12 p.m. Okay. And then lunch, um, again, recurring, starts at 12, goes to 1. And then um, here, she has different days of the week. So Monday's typing, Tuesday, math. Wednesday is choice. Um, Thursday, grammar, uh, spelling, language. And then Friday, reading, comprehension. So what I did is I have the main task recurring every single day except for weekends, just like I set the other ones. But then the subtasks will recur on the day of the week that I set it to. So that way, Monday, um, the typing will come due and then Tuesday, the math will come due and so on. So I had that set up. And again, I, I think that this is, you know, if you get your child involved in this, I think that they could actually come in and you could assign these things to them and they could check them off, track their time. Um, because inside of, the subtask. So if I open up Monday, you know, they can track their time right inside of each of the tasks. So then if you ever, and I don't know this, I don't, I don't have children and I don't homeschool, but, um, if you ever needed to run a report on hours or show education hours or anything like that, you would easily be able to do that if they track their time inside of ClickUp, because you can run timesheets and time reports and things like that. You can look at workload, um, just like you would for a team, but you can do this with, um, you know, with education. Um, so again, um, you can, the main task I have recurring every single day from 1 to 1.30 p.m. because that's what she had it set at. And then each of the subtasks are recurring on those days of the week that they would um, come up. So you could assign these to the, to your um, kids, you know, if you're homeschooling, you could even make a schedule for each child. So this could be, you know, child number one, child number two, and then you could have their own schedule and then assign them those tasks so that they get them in their home screen that they can kind of go through. Um, so again, I just broke this down <clears throat> um, based on what she had in her schedule. And then what I did is I created a folder <clears throat> for a lesson plan. So she shared with me a lesson plan that she used um, last year. And so basically I just took it to and, and broke it down into how I would organize it in, in ClickUp. Now, I think that you could decide to do, um, you know, each subject as a list if you wanted to. I took her one lesson plan and put it into one list. And then took the different subjects and put them as um, as tasks. But again, you could break it down any way that you would like. Um, I just thought that this was a, this was what how I would have done it. And so again, I made subtasks out of the different topics. She had some notes next to the different topics, um, and then she had it broken down by she has three kids. Um, and so the two ch kid two is actually her two, um, older kids and then kid one's the younger child. Um, and so they are doing different things, same, you know, they're covering similar things, but just different levels. And so you could assign these to the kids. Um, you could even break it out into having each kid has their own list for that month or that semester or whatever, however you want to do it. Um, if this is just for you organizing it, then maybe what you do is create a folder for each child and then you actually put assignments into lists for them based on like the month. You know, if you wanted to break this out, let's say, um, let's say we, we want to create a folder for, you know, uh, let's see, kid number one, you know, obviously you'd put their name, but, um, and then let's say we'll do one for kid number two. Okay. And then inside of these, let's say you break it down <clears throat> maybe by month. 
Um, so we'll say we let's call this um, September. And then you could do uh, October. And then again, so in each of these, then you could start to put in like the assignments based on your lesson plans. And it would be really easy to assign those things from here. So if this is your lesson plan, this is how you have it broken down. So if she has, you know, Mark Twain, that's one of the kid. one of the kids needs to read, you know, um, the book or, um, you could, let's say, so this one I, I had starting from the 16th to the 27th, <clears throat> excuse me, but let's say, um, you're going to assign this to kid two. So I'd come in here and I would duplicate this. I'm going to go over to kid two, September. I'm going to, I want to duplicate everything. <clears throat> okay. So now it, it has the due dates. We've duplicated. It goes to open. Um, you can assign it to them. So now inside of their list, I think it was kid two. Yeah. Okay. Inside of their list, here's now their assignment. Um, you can, you can add a start date. So if you want that column, you just come down here. Uh, maybe priority. We can hide that one, but we want the start date to show and the end date there. Keep the assignee. Um, so then you can start to assign them these um, tasks this way. And then the other thing that you can do, let's see, is you can actually link these tasks together. So to make it maybe easier on yourself. So if you add a relationship. And you go down to kid number two, September, and we click on Mark Twain. So now it's going to show the relationship to the kids list. Um, just to make it easier for you to, to track it, you can add that relationship inside of there. So this is one way to organize it. The other thing is if you start to add dates to these, so with these, I did start and end dates to show how long they would be doing it. So if they're reading the book, maybe it takes a week or two. Um, then what you can do is you can look at a calendar. What I did is, oops, I went to settings and I, um, I, check show tasks, show my tasks from all lists and then recurring future tests. So I have them set now. So now we can see, you know, Mark Twain's going to take up this time and then we can see kid one and two subtasks. And the reason we, so I have the folder selected. So if we had multiple um, lists in here of like, you know, September, October, November, if we had those months, I'd be able to see everything. Um, if I click on the list, then I want to see the board view. I would need to do the same thing. So I'm just going to come over here. We want to show all of them. There we go. And then we'll just save the view. So it'll show up again for us. Um, and then we can see the different tasks. And obviously you can add colors and other tags and things like that. This is showing all of the unscheduled tasks that I put in here. Um, obviously you'd want to assign some of these. I don't know if you'd want to do it this way or in, in the folders like I showed here, but anyway, so that's how you can start to see what your schedule looks like as far as, um, you know, that month and assignments and things like that. So the next thing that I want to show is, um, per subject. So let's say you had a student, um, I was an English major in college, so when I built this out as an example, I was kind of using it as an example of, you know, that's what I'm, that's what I know. But anyway, so in this list, I um, built out schedule for the semester, um, and it could be, you know, you could do by month if you wanted. I just thought it, you know, list of assignments. So a lot of times in schools, you'll get, you could ask the teacher for, you know, a syllabus and what's going to happen for the, for the, either the semester or the year. 
and you know get ahead of the assignments get them put in here and then be able to track it so you could put you know a list of assignments list of books to read you could set yourself a recurring task of reading 30 minutes if you're the student or if you're the parent helping the student get organized you could set them a recurring task there is an app that they can get on their phone which i've covered in previous video um, about um, getting the app um, and then you can break it down by assignment, uh, putting in the assignment when it's due. So planning ahead, you can do start and end date like I just showed in, in the previous example. So let's say, you know, this assignment, they need to start it today, but it's going to be due, you know, maybe on Monday or something. So you'd want to set the due date. Again, we can add a start date if that is helpful to the person trying to get organized. If it's helpful to see that, <clears throat> you can put that there. You can move the columns around so you can see start date. Oh, I didn't mean to move that far. Um, and then for a long paper, let's say they're doing some sort of research paper, right? I would put the start and end date of the start date when they're going to start actually working on it and then the end date of when it's actually due. And then you can set milestones for them or they can set milestones for themselves where it's, you know, do the research. So set that date of when you're gonna work on that, you know, draft the outline, revise the outline, submit final draft. And then inside of here, you know, I just put in some examples of a checklist. So revising the outline, checking for spelling and grammatical errors, check for citation format, quotation format, check footers. Um, <clears throat> so, here you can really break this down for the student or the student can break this down to really get themselves organized for the semester. And then once you start putting the due dates in, again, you can always go back to that calendar view to start to see what assignments are gonna be due. Um, you could put everything in one list and I didn't set it up this way, but you could ultimately set it up all in one list and the statuses could be the subjects, right? You could do that as well. So it really just depends on, you know, how your brain works, what looks better for you. Some people like the board view. Um, so you could look at it this way. You could make um, each status. So these are the statuses. So each status could be a subject and then um, you could organize it that way. I think the most important thing is, is getting due dates in there and any large projects break them down into smaller pieces. I think that's really where I struggle the most in school is seeing this big project that I have to do, um, write this huge paper or, you know, whatever, or, um, you know, even memorizing things, but setting, um, you know, setting a recurring task to remind me to study a little bit each day, I think would, you know, would help me. It was something that, you know, my parents helped me with as I was growing up and in school, but big projects, seeing it broken down in little tiny pieces was really helpful. Um, for me. And so here's an electronic way to do that. Um, and again, the, the student, if they are going to be using it, can get it on their phone, they can use it on their computer. Um, so yeah, I think that that's helpful. Um, hopefully it's helpful. And um, again, my name is Amelie. I'm with Systematic Excellence Consulting. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. If you have questions, feel free to comment. Um, if you are looking for assistance getting something like this set up, I do offer done with you services where I work with you to get the thing set up, train you on it. Um, there's a link below that you can book a free call so we can kind of go over it, see if, if I'm able to help. Um, and again, if you enjoyed this video, if you could subscribe, um, and, um, to check my, my future videos out, I would really be grateful. And, um, thank you so much for watching.